Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Military machines must be able to operate in extreme temperature ranges in wet and dry conditions. To reach this stage, they pass through a phase of testing at McKinley Climatic Laboratory. Okay, we got max and we got good. Today, we show you inside the U.S.'s coldest laboratory, where massive helicopters are tested at extremely cold temperatures. McKinley Climatic Laboratory, established in 1947, is a facility for evaluating the effects of harsh weather on aircraft, weapon systems, and other military equipment. By replicating various climatic situations, it ensures operating reliability and safety. The laboratory assesses performance in heat, cold, humidity, and other environmental conditions, providing critical data for the defense and aerospace industries. Among the aircraft placed inside its massive chamber is the MQ-9 Reaper, the Air Force's workhorse remotely piloted aircraft. In this test, engineers simulate sub-zero Arctic conditions, dropping temperatures far below freezing to evaluate the drone's ability to function in some of the harshest environments on Earth. We can simulate uh, all type of environments from minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 165 degrees. Uh, solar loading, snow, as you can see today, freezing rain, rain, sand, dust, pretty much anything Mother Nature can throw at you. No matter where global missions may take it, the General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper is a larger, heavier, and more capable aircraft than the MQ-1 Predator. It is used by the U.S. Air Force for various military and surveillance operations beyond national boundaries. In the world of unmanned aerial systems, the MQ-1 Predator and the MQ-9 Reaper stand as remarkable achievements. While both aircraft share some similarities, the Reaper was purposefully designed to be a more advanced and capable UAV, specifically tailored for combat missions. Let's explore the distinguishing features that set the Reaper apart and elevate its performance to new heights. When it comes to speed, the Predator reaches a maximum of 84 miles per hour. While the Reaper pushes the boundaries, soaring at impressive speeds of up to 300 miles per hour. The increased velocity of the Reaper allows for swift response times and rapid maneuverability in dynamic combat situations. Payload capacity is another area where the Reaper shines. While the Predator can carry up to 450 pounds, the Reaper boasts an exceptional payload capability of up to 3,000 pounds. This substantial increase empowers the Reaper to carry a diverse array of mission-specific equipment. Each weapon is carefully loaded onto the aircraft's hard points, adhering to strict safety protocols and ensuring proper alignment and synchronization with targeting systems. The MQ-9's typical armament consists of four AGM-114 Hellfire laser-guided air-to-ground missiles, along with two GBU-12 Paveway-2 laser-guided bombs. It can also be equipped with other weapon systems, such as the AGM-176 Griffin and the GBU-38 JDAM. 
one could wonder, is it safe to deploy a drone worth millions of dollars to unknown territories? Well, patrolling a drone in international airspace always involves a risk of interception by other aircraft. On March 13, 2023, two Russian Su-27 aircraft conducted an unsafe and unprofessional intercept with a U.S. Air Force unmanned MQ-9 aircraft operating within international airspace over the Black Sea. Russian Su-27s dumped fuel on the MQ-9 and struck its propeller, thereby causing the drone to crash into the Black Sea. Like any other complex aircraft, assembling an MQ Reaper requires skilled technicians and attention to detail. The MQ-9 fuselage serves as the main structure of the drone, which is set up inside the hangar before initiating the assembly process. After everything is set up, the crew assembles the wing and tail sections separately. Wing assembly involves attaching the main wing structure, ailerons, and flaps on each side of the fuselage. In contrast, the tail assembly involves joining two stabilizers, a propeller and a rudder below the tail section. When assembled, the drone can be loaded with weaponry to conduct missions. After assembling and loading weaponry on it, the MQ-9 is towed to the runway by a modified tow truck. The maintenance crew prepares the aircraft and ensures it is ready to fly for up to 27 hours. The wheel chocks are removed, and the pilot at the ground control station, or GCS, is signaled for takeoff. The MQ-9 is controlled remotely from a mobile ground control station that can be set up anywhere in the world. The typical day for an MQ-9 sensor operator starts at mass brief. You'll gather all the weather for the day, the intel, all the things you need uh, and required to fly. And then after that, you'll do a crew brief with your pilot. You'll step out to the jet, fly the line for a lot amount of time that you're scheduled for. Then we have additional duties and shop work, and we'll accomplish those uh, outside of flying. The MQ-9 Reaper is typically used to conduct attack missions globally, such as the one that killed the Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani. To successfully launch a missile attack, the Reaper must be pointed toward its target to create the perfect firing angle. Once the target is identified, the operator launches the attack from the ground control station. The missiles take around 30 seconds to hit the target, depending on the launch height and distance of the Reaper from the target at the time of the launch. One rather large challenge for the United States Air Force is the role snowstorms play on its air bases. Regardless of the winter weather, air bases need to be operationally ready. Civil engineer squadrons work around the clock at sites like Dover Air Force Base, or AFB, in Delaware and Ramstein Air Base, AB, in Germany, to maintain runway functionality during snowstorms. While de-icing teams prepare airplanes for safe operations, heavy equipment operators utilize specialized plows and brushes to remove snow from flight lines. Because military aviation is mission critical, operations must continue even in the face of extreme weather. Maintenance workers at Bagram Airfield illustrated the difficulty of balancing weather and aircraft maintenance. Personnel from the 455th EAMS continued vital maintenance on the C-130 Super Hercules aircraft, despite the severe snowfall. While specialists carried out necessary maintenance, de-icing vehicles worked alongside maintainers to remove hazardous ice buildup. 
although the five inches of snow made for dangerous operating conditions, workers had to persevere through the bad weather since maintaining aircraft mission readiness was strategically crucial. To prevent cold weather injuries and guarantee appropriate maintenance standards, maintainers used specialist cold weather wear and equipment while adhering to stringent safety regulations. A crucial safety measure is de-icing aircraft, which is accomplished by applying specialized fluids through operator cabins installed on booms. While Type 4 fluid offers longer protection with its thicker protective layer, effective to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, Type 1 fluid, which is a blend of propylene glycol and water, eliminates existing ice at temperatures as low as negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Ground crews drive specialized vehicles to apply heated de-icing treatments, carefully examining the wings and control surfaces. Meanwhile, runway crews maintain safe operating surfaces with specialized tools, including blowers, brushes, and plows. At the same time, friction measurement equipment monitors runway conditions during winter operations. An important development in runway safety evaluation for winter operations is the RT3 friction calculator. This automated system continuously detects surface friction while traveling across runways, taxiways, and parking aprons, unlike its predecessor, which needed manual stops every thousand feet. It is operated by operations support squadrons and gives pilots and maintenance workers up-to-date information on surface conditions to enable them to make well-informed decisions concerning aircraft operations. Right. The effectiveness of the technology lowers the needless use of de-icing chemicals, saving money and increasing accuracy by removing calculating errors caused by humans. Nice. And it got worse as we went this way. That's good to know. The system, it calculates the friction of the different parts of the airfield, such as the runway and a mass parking apron, all the other taxiways and aprons, to be able to let the pilots and maintainers know how safe it is to tow or for an aircraft to take off. As seen at sites like Phoenix Airfield in Antarctica and RAF Lakenheath during snow squalls, Winter aircraft takeoffs necessitate exact coordination between ground staff and pilots, while larger aircraft like C-17s require specific runway considerations. F-15s operating in snow circumstances require substantial pre-flight planning. The groundbreaking feat at Phoenix Airfield demonstrates the technical difficulties of cold weather operations, where engineers created a 32-inch deep compacted snow runway that can accommodate wheeled aircraft. The runway can operate in harsh weather conditions all year round thanks to its innovative design, which uses 160,000-pound rollers for snow compaction. From the freezing chambers of the McKinley Climatic Laboratory to snow-covered runways in Afghanistan, Europe, and even Antarctica, military aviation proves its resilience against some of the harshest environments on Earth. Extreme weather may challenge machines and people alike, but it also drives innovation and reinforces readiness. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.